You're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're now talking about a situation in Kwara State where the government has announced an extension of, you know, the closure of about 10 mission schools over the hijab controversy. Uh, we'll be discussing this in detail with the Chief Press Secretary to the Kwara State Gov Governor, Rafiu Ajakaye. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Let's uh, address the hijab question. Why did the Kwara State governor or government in the first place uh, issue that directive to schools or public schools in Kwara to begin to use the hijab? Well, thank you so much. Uh, before I proceed, it's important for me to clarify uh, that there are two categories of schools in Kwara State, according to the Kwara State Education Law. We have private schools and we have public schools. That is the first clarification I would like to make. Now, the private schools belong to private concerns, in which case uh, the Kwara State government can only act as regulators. But that's a different kettle of fish when it comes to public schools. Public schools are subject to public policies, which means if government is having a policy, public schools will have to adhere to such policies. Now, the government did not just wake up one morning to say, everybody must use a job. No. And as a matter of fact, what the government has said is that every willing Muslim school girl I want to repeat myself, every willing Muslim school girl who wants to wear the hijab should have the right to do so. The government is not saying that every student must wear the hijab. I think we should be able to draw the line here. Okay. And as I have said, the question of hijab is not limited to Kwara State. As a matter of fact, it is not even limited to Nigeria. It's a global discourse. Okay, so, Mr. Jakai. All right, Mr. Jakai, I understand. Yes, I understand how you've made the distinction between the schools, there's a the private and the public. But I think the issue here in Kwara is that this this directive also applied to 10 mission schools. So it's CNS College, it's St. Anthony College, um, Equa School, Surulere Baptist Secondary School, Bishop Smith Secondary School, CAC Secondary School, uh, St. William Secondary School, St. John Secondary School, St. Barnabas Secondary School uh, in Quara State. So I wanted to ask, seeing that these are, are Catholic schools, these schools were established by Christian missionaries, should there not have been a consideration for, you know, what they represent in terms of their Christian values when this law was, you know, was uh, being enacted? Well, I deliberately made a distinction I made from the beginning that there are only two categories of school in the state, private schools and public schools. Now, uh, circa 2012, the Incorporated Association of Christians approached the court uh, to direct the state government to return schools to their original owners, as uh, you have said, Christian missions. And uh, there have been judgments upon judgments from the court, the Inquiry State High Court, and of course, the Court of Appeal. When you look at the two judgments, they were very clear about the status of this school, that is the ownership status of this school, which was why I was particular about making the distinction uh, between private and public schools. According to the law of Kwara State today, uh, those schools are regarded as public schools. Now, Nigeria is a product of history. Our education laws are all a product of history. Nigeria has gone through different phases in terms of uh, coming up with laws and policies regulating education. You recall that in the 70s, 
the government of Nigeria, in its wisdom, took over schools. There were issues that led to that. We were coming from somewhere, and the government at that time felt the most appropriate step to be taken is for the government to take over certain schools. Now, it's important to state that these schools cut across religious lines, and in fact, private schools were also involved. This is particularly true in Kwara State. You have schools that were originally founded by Christian missionaries, and you also have schools that were founded by Muslim missionaries. And indeed, you have schools that were originally owned by private individuals. Incidentally, the current governor of Kwara State, his father, had his school taken over. Now, that is the, uh, the IGS. So, we are coming from somewhere. Uh, in some other part of the country where schools were taken over, government, in their wisdom, that is in those states, decided to change the names of those schools. In the case of Kwara State, and I think in some part of uh, the Southwest, the government felt uh, we should honor the founders of those schools by retaining the names, their original names. Now, the fact that government decided to retain those names does not confer ownership on any other private uh, concerns. At least the court has made that pronouncement and we are guided by the law. Now, I must uh, quickly make this clarification that what is at issue now is not necessarily the issue of ownership of those schools because that is subject uh, to final judicial arbitration at the Supreme Court. So the government is not dragging the ownership of those schools at this time, even though, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I, the High Court and the Appeal Court have given unanimous oh, Mr. judgment Mr. saying that those schools belonged to the government of Kwara State. All right, Mr. Jakai, I think, I think we've, we've, we've been able to, kindly hold on, I think we've been able to establish uh, clearly where the challenge is. It's not about ownership now as the uh, case is still in court. Um, but, you know, about the laws that should govern these schools, whether private or public schools. And like you've said, the public schools, exactly. um, of course, have to work with the laws of the Kwara State government, which, like you, you have said, you know, should allow anybody, both wearing a hijab or not wearing a hijab, should be able to attend these public schools. Can you confirm that's what you're saying? Exactly. The point the government is making is that if there are Muslim school girls who feel they want to wear the hijab, they should be allowed to do that because uh, part of the issues that were decided at the court of law uh, was a question of hijab. And uh, my laws at the court of appeal made it very clear, made it very clear that the issue of hijab borders around fundamental human rights and that such rights cannot be vitiated uh, by any government. Uh, you recall that we had similar Court of Appeal judgment in 2016 between the government of Lagos State and some Muslim parents. Uh, in Kwara State, we had similar Court of Appeal judgment, and I think the most recent of such Court of Appeal judgment on hijab was the one in 2019 in, in Kwara State. Now, it is important to note that the Court of Appeal judgment, Lagos State, made it very clear the position of the law on hijab. Uh, that judgment, according to legal luminaries, are declaratory in nature, which means those judgments cannot be stayed. All right. They, they, they are judgments where the court simply stated the position of the law. And the law today is that no government in Nigeria can stop uh, a Muslim girl child who desires to wear a hijab. All right. So now, just to, I, I want you to also clarify something for us. It's not saying that 
every child must use the yeah, that, that, that has already but been stated, uh, Mr. Mr. Jackie. Kindly hold on. Uh, I want you to clarify something for us. You know, you earlier mentioned that there are Muslim uh, missionary schools also in Kwara State. Okay, I can get that. Can you hear me clearly? Please come again. Uh, you, you earlier, in one of the statements that you made earlier, said that there are Muslim missionary schools also in Kwara State. Same with that there are Christian missionary schools. Is that right? Yeah, there are schools. There are schools that were originally owned by Christian missionaries, and there are schools that were originally founded by Muslim missionaries. Okay, and, and those the, the, the Muslim. And, their, yeah, and, and those government. schools, those schools currently are also under control of government. They are seen as public schools, right? Yes, all of them are seen as public schools. Okay, yes. so 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 would you would you would it do you think it might be a problem? If a Christian, you know, girl child decides to attend those Muslim schools without wearing a hijab, what it is? Can you please come again? I'm asking if there's a Christian girl child in Kwara State that decides to attend any of those Muslim schools that are now seen as public schools um, without a hijab. Do you think that would be a problem? problem because the question of hijab is optional that's what the government is saying if a child decides to wear it please uh she will be within a right to do so and if a child decides not to do that nobody will have the power to compel her to so do okay all right, so we, we understand the facts that you have laid you know, in, before us. And I wanted you to talk about the closure of these schools. Because from what we've seen and heard from people on ground in Kwara, when this whole thing started, you know, some Muslim girls or some Muslim students went to school wearing the hijab, but they were turned back at the gates because, you know, according to the Christian missions, it doesn't confirm, conform to the values, you know, of the school. And, you know, parents protested, the Muslim community in Kwara protested. And because of all this, the school has been locked down. It was supposed to open March, uh, March 10th, but the government has now extended, you know, the closure of this school. For how long would these schools be closed? Because we know that the academic performance or activity of these kids are suffering. So how long would this last? And what's the rationale behind it, the closure of the schools? Well, you must, uh, we, we, we must appreciate the fact that the primary and the most fundamental function of any government is to protect lives and properties. If the government um, has premonitions about breakdown of law and order, the most responsible thing for such government to do is to prevent it, which is what we have done. Um, we have disagreement on both sides about the question of hijab. The government over the past three weeks has been trying to build a consensus amongst the Muslims and the Christians alike. Uh, the SSG, the office of the SSG, the deputy governor and the governor himself have held several meetings with the stakeholders to build a consensus on the question of hijab. Uh, it was after these meetings that the government took a decision which was announced over one week ago. So the government did not just take that decision. The government took that decision after meeting with several stakeholders, including statesmen from both sides and fourth leaders. Now, the government has a duty to its citizens to take a position, particularly when the court has spoken, uh, which is what the government did. But the government is not just sticking to the law for the sake of it. The government is also talking to all the stakeholders to ensure that we have a consensus. Now, that meeting has not stopped as recently as yesterday night. His Excellency still met with uh, various Christian leaders. Uh, we are also speaking with the Muslim community for us to have a one house and proceed from there. Now, we are not happy that these schools have been shot. We understand the fact that uh, this is affecting our kids. 
Uh, their examination is on the way, and uh, nobody is glad that they are, they, they are sitting at home. However, the government will have to prioritize security. Yeah, but can only I'm, go I'm, to I'm not sure exactly. Anything when there is security. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why this, you know, is, is seen as you know a possible security. Um, uh, issue. Um, if we're talking about young students who, you know, want to go to school in a hijab or not, I'm not sure why it is a security challenge for the state um, or why that should, you know, uh, you know, uh, lead to breakdown of law and order in the state. Um, but just to quickly confirm from you also, the the parties involved, I'm, I, they all are aware of the court cases and the court proceedings so far and the fact that as it stands, those schools are seen as public schools. Of course, both parties are aware of the status of this school and, of course, the position of the constitution so, on the so, question so of where the is, Both parties so are aware. So why is aware. there a challenge? But like I said... Why is there a challenge are, are if they are aware of what, what the, court, me, uh, the court ruling says? Why is there a challenge with abiding with what the court ruling says so that the students can continue going to school until if, if at any time, you know, that court ruling changes. I mean, why, why, why is the best option to shut the school down when they can simply be made aware of what the court ruling says and everyone abides by the rules of the court? Well, you only need to be in Quara to know why the government has taken that decision. The government had not done that uh, the day it did, we, we possibly will have Quara in the news for bad reasons. We don't want that. We don't want anybody, uh, we don't want our people facing one another. Uh, we don't want violence in any part of our state, uh, which is why the government had to take that decision. But like I've said, uh, security has been beefed up. Uh, the government has taken a position in line with the law and um, so just, just we, to... We are, we are all like please allow these things to be All right. So uh, yeah. just to quickly bring in the voice of the Christian Association of Nigeria to this issue, uh, you know, they're saying that they're surprised that the Kwara State government is taking this decision knowing that it's still in the Supreme Court. And they, they've condemned the use of hijab in Christian mission schools, saying, you know, this is according to the Khan, they're saying, quote, this will cause discrimination in schools and allow terrorists to easily identify our children and our wards. That's what they're basically saying on this matter. But uh, we'll, we're looking forward to having more conversations with you as this issue unfolds. We hope that uh, all stakeholders are able to dialogue and reach an amicable solution. So thank you very much, Mr. Rafiu Ajakai, for coming on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right. I'm just still trying to wrap my head around why it's a security issue, why it's a security challenge. It's, it's, it's you know funny, why. really. I mean, security officers have been deployed to those schools in Kwara State, and you wonder... Our security of officers can be deployed to better issues, to you know, tackle security, real security issues. I don't see why a protest, because parents plan to protest, you know, this issue and Christian leaders as well. It really just, for me, points out the level of religious really tension that exists in Nigeria. Um, if a, an issue as, as I would say little, little as this, you know, is, is leading to the possibilities of religious tension and crisis. It, it, it paints that picture for me already, that the slightest thing right now in Nigeria is already going towards a religious crisis, and it makes no sense. I feel, I feel um, most for the students who are now affected because of to wear hijab or not, who, if it's a public or a missionary school, and because of that now they're all home, the academic work is suffering while this whole matter is still you know, yeah, playing out. I saw it in strike for almost a year. Anyway. anyway, that's where we wrap up the breakfast this morning. Thank you so much for staying with us on this very interesting Tuesday morning, and uh, we hope that you enjoyed every bit of it. We, of course, will also remind you to check up on any parts that you may have missed on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Yes, that's it. Anetta Felix here. Thanks for joining us this morning. And of course, Osaogi Ogbawa. See you tomorrow.